These are the highly used and incredibly popular LED strip tapes that you've seen on many stages across the globe and the stage designs that we've done here at my church. And today I wanna to show you how to wire this to your DMX decoder so that way you can use this on your DMX software or board or controller, things like that. We'll also talk about how to wire power and uh, whatever else you need to get this going. And before we get started, if you wanna see our latest video about this stage design that you see behind me using these LED strips and some other stuff, go check out this video right here. I've also linked it in the description below. All the stuff that we use, the materials, uh, the tools and things to get this going, and these LED strips are listed and linked in the description below. So go check those out and uh, you know see what you might need for your stage. The tools that we're gonna be using are a wire stripper, a wire cutter, a small flathead screwdriver, and then a big flathead or Phillips head screwdriver for the power supply. And of course, you're gonna need the LED strips. The decoder we went with is the 32 channel RGBW DMX 512 LED decoder slash controller on Amazon. Now, this decoder will allow you to comfortably control eight RGBW LED strips with virtually any DMX software or controller. And to power this decoder, we are using the 12 volt 30 amp DC universal regulated switching power supply. That's a mouthful as well. Unfortunately, this power supply does not come with a power cable. So you're gonna need to grab your mom's old computer power cable and snip this end off, strip these wires, and wire it up manually. You can use an 18 AWG standard power cord, as you can see right here. That's, that's what we have. I'll link it on Amazon if you, um, if you wanna look at it. But anyway, we're gonna take this end off right here. We don't need this anymore. This was the end that went actually into your electronic device. Do not snip this end off. <laughs> this is the part that goes into the wall. So let's go ahead and prep this wire. We're gonna snip off this end, just like I said, and that will expose our phase, our neutral and ground wires on the inside. So that's black, white, and green. Just like that. This is a really old wire stripper, but it still works great. You don't have to do these very long. You don't have to strip them very long because it's going into this power supply. And this little part right here is not very deep, so. Just snip off a moderate amount of wire housing. That should be enough right there. So that right there should be enough. Now we're gonna pull up our power supply and you will see an L, an N, and this little circle that has these lines through it. It's like a little symbol, it has these lines through it. Anyway, this is your ground, this little circle is. Your N is your neutral and your L is your phase or your line. So the color wire we'll use for L is black, N will be white, and your ground is green. Let's go ahead and start with your line and get that going. Flip that little, little covering tray up. Unscrew these enough to slide the wire all the way in. I'm not exposing any of the, the actual wire itself, the copper. And there you go. Now it's time to go ahead and connect the power from the power supply to the decoder. Let's do that. Oh, and one more thing. Do not connect this in into the wall until you have everything ready to go. Now we're ready to take power from your power supply to your decoder. What's really cool is I found this jacketed, it's like a, it's a jacketed wire that has five individual copper wires in it. They are color coded. Um, I'll show you in a close up. Um, these are, they have like this blue, red, yellow, green, and white. But the colors really don't matter when you're using it for just power. The main thing is, is that you make sure that you're not taking a V plus to a V minus, things like that. So you, that's, that's one great reason to have it color coded so you know exactly what wire is going to what. But also what's great about this wire is that you can use this to lengthen your LED strip as well, the, the wires on the end of your LED strip. You can butt splice that or solder that or however you wanna attach that to these wires and this will be your run that lengthens these all the way down to your decoder. But for today, we're just gonna cut from here on this little sample LED strip and connect it directly to our decoder. So we're gonna put this down, cut off about a foot and we'll connect from our power supply to our decoder. Now all you gotta do is prep the ends of both of these wires. Again, we only need four of these and I'm gonna use all but green. There you go, something like that. 
This is the other side. Oh goodness, cut that short. Once you get your wires stripped and prepped and ready to go, um, make sure they're no longer than maybe a little less than a half an inch uh, when you're putting in your power supply. You don't want any of these wires showing out of here because if they start touching and stuff like that, that's not a good thing. I've separated these apart right after I stripped them out. I separated these apart and I got these two red and yellow ready for V+. On your power supply, you can see a little engraving of V+. Plus and V minus. Your V plus will match up to your DC V plus over here on your decoder and then your V minus on your power supply will match up to your DC minus on your decoder. So let's get going. You'll need your screwdriver. Just loosen these up just enough to get the copper in there and I've separated my wire out to hopefully fit right in there. So let's go ahead and do these first. Crank that down, make sure it's nice and solid. And again on our white. So now that we have our wires into the power supply, you will see an extra V minus and an extra V plus. We will use these to go to our other side of our decoder, but let's go over to the decoder and pop these in. Remember what I said, we need our plus to plus, so that's red and ye yellow, and then our minus to minus, which is blue and white. Go ahead and put those in. Now let's go ahead and prep our second wire for power from the power supply to the decoder. I'm doubling up on the red, and that's for no purpose other than not having a fourth space to put that in. We're just putting it in there with that. So same thing here, I'll just double up on the white. Let's get the blue in there. All right. Okay, now we're gonna go on this side. So what's great about this side is there is space for four. Take your small flathead, make sure these are unscrewed enough to be able to put your wire in there. Again, we wanna go red and yellow for DC plus and blue and white for DC minus. If you can see that little copper wire sticking out, that's a little too much for this space, so I'm gonna cut that off just a little bit. I don't want too much sticking out. That's one thing I like to do is just kind of tidy these up just a little bit so that way not too much of that is sticking out. So now once you got power in place, it's time to connect your strip. I'm gonna use, like we said at the beginning of this video, an RGBW, uh, which has five wires and I got the, the, the proper decoder for that because each of our outputs on the decoder have five connections. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna wanna make sure we get these in the right spot. Our V plus is the black wire on your LED strip. The R is red, green is G, B is blue, and W is white. We'll go ahead and clip this guy off right here. We don't need this anymore unless you're lengthening your wire. And if you lengthen your wire, you can actually use these as your connectors. And then, you know, your, your run of wire can connect to one of these. And then you just connect these together, tape it, and whatnot. For this purpose, we're just going to clip this off and wire it directly to our decoder and show you what that looks like. So clip off the end. You want to make sure you give yourself enough room. If you mess up, you have plenty of wire to work with. And these are pretty delicate wires. So Unlike our solid over here, our solid copper, uh, these are not solid. And you're gonna need to be really careful with these to not, um, when, as you strip them, don't break them. It's very important. Okay, we're ready. We're gonna go to channel one. Like I said, black is our power. That's gonna be the V plus that you see. We'll do one at a time. Make sure we got it nice and seated and go ahead and clamp it down. There's red, green is G, blue is blue, and white is W. You see I didn't leave any wire exposed. Just your housing. Now assuming you have eight strips you want to connect to this, just do this exact thing on all eight of these channels. We are now at our lighting console, ready to address our decoder. 
and test out our LED strip and make sure that thing works. That's very important. Your DMAX software may look completely different than ours. We are using the MPC software by Martin. It's their, their discontinued software. I know there's a new one by some other company. We'll figure that out later. Um, and also we're using the discontinued M2PC board. We're gonna go ahead and address this decoder box. And I wanted to make sure that when I address my decoder that the channels that I address it to are gonna work. So I was looking on here and I wanted to see how many channels I had free. I have 277 channels free. So that way the channel I can start on is 236. So we are gonna start on 236. One thing you do wanna make sure of is you wanna make sure you have 32 channels per decoder that you use of space available on your universe. Cause it's gonna take a lot of space. If you use three decoders, obviously you're gonna need, you know, like a lot of channels. 96 channels available of DMX space on your universe. Now let's go ahead and address our decoder. I'm gonna just pick it up right here. When you have power, your power supply, your, LED, your little green LED light on the power supply will turn green as soon as you plug that sucker in. I put an Apple sticker on there just to know that it works. Uh, we plugged it in, everything works. And then uh, this decoder, I wanna press the button there. Your lights will come on and it's addressed to channel four. Uh, so we're gonna address that to what? 236 is what we said, I think. So let's go ahead and press and hold B1. So we can go to two, 30, and six, 236. There we are. You also want to make sure that it's in an 8-bit profile on your DMX decoder. All right, we'll let that set in place. If you press and hold B3, you can change it to 8 or 16-bit. Right now we have ours. See how that's flashing? It says 8B, which means that it's an 8-bit. You can change it to 16-bit. Just by pressing B3 again, it'll change to 16-bit. We're gonna go back to 8-bit. All right, so we'll let that set in place. So on our software, we're just gonna hit this patch button. I'm gonna go over here to see all of our fixtures. And then I'm gonna hit this command button or commands button. And I'm gonna select new fixture. So what I'm looking for is a generic profile. In most of your lighting softwares, you'll be able to patch fixture and look at like all different brands and things like that. Uh, generic is usually an option. So you can click generic and you're looking for an RGBW fixture profile underneath generic. So here it is, RGBW. And then DMX profile, uh, channel one, red, two, green, three, blue, and four is white. All right, so that's it. So I'm, on this software, I'm gonna click the auto patch button. Let's name it. So we have the uh, LED strip. We're just doing one strip, but if you do have eight strips plugged into your decoder, in, on the amount you're gonna need to do eight. I'm gonna select uh, universe two, okay? And my address is gonna be 236, like I said. All right, so let's go ahead and hit apply to patch. There it is, LED strip, RGBW, universe two, starting on 236. So pay attention to the LED strip. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see that a little bit better. But as long as our patch worked, we should be able to dial in red, green, and blue and start mixing our colors and things like that. So here we go. This is it. Should be red. Yeah, it's red. Can you see that? That looks good. All right, and green. Oh yeah, green works. And blue. Nice. And white. Awesome. And I love you know the different type of colors you can get with these things. You can mix colors. Of course, green and blue make like a teal color. If you start backing off the blue, it'll do like more of an aquamarine, those kind of colors. Beautiful. If you want to make a, a yellow, of course, that's going to be your green and red. If you back down on the green a little bit, you start getting creeping into the oranges and oh yeah, add a little bit of blue, kind of have start getting some nice pink, but then straight up red and blue, you have like a lighter purple to a fuchsia kind of color if you start taking away the blue. The white on these particular LED strips is super clean, super bright. Um, go check these out, I'll link these below. 
in the description uh, to these exact LED strips, as well as everything else that we use uh, to make this happen. So with these LED strips, the sky is the limit. There's so much that you can do with these, so many designs that you can make. I wanna see them. If you make a design and you wanna show me what you did, maybe something that I said or one of our videos inspired you, uh, go share it with me on Instagram. You can just like send me a DM, share it with me on uh, Facebook. You can find us where Worship Leader Hangout on Instagram, Worship Leader Hangout on Facebook, of course, right here, Worship Leader Hangout on YouTube. And I would just love to see these designs and see what you come up with. I do wanna just say one quick thing. Remember that our message and our mission is to share the gospel of Jesus. He is the most important thing. And remember that great worship leaders are always learning. Have a great day, guys.